Hi, my name is Caroline Deschapé and I'm from the Universities of Ghent and Nantes. Today, I'm going to talk about the highly advantage microalgae for the microphytobatos and their relationship, their relationship with oysters in the frame of the Cosema project. Microphytobatos are assemblages of microscopic algae which form biofilms in indefinite remote at the top of the sediment during low tide. They are very important primary producers in estuary and coastal ecosystems, and also provide a lot of ecosystem services, such as the driving of nutrient fluxes or the stabilization of the sediment. However, the factors underlying the, the dynamics are still not fully understood. In the context of the bay you can see here, along the Atlantic coast, bay which is, which is dominated by cultivated and wild oysters, we wanted to understand the impact of these oysters on MPB spatial distribution. <coughs> Here on this picture, you can see a highly concentrated biofilm surrounded by white oysters. We already know that diverse such as oysters feed on microalgae, but is this relationship only limited to a regulation world? That's what we investigated. An issue was that MPB is highly variable at different scales, and mudflats can also be quite difficult to access. However, despite the microscopic size, MPB biofilms are actually visible by satellite remote sensing, thanks to their pigment content. In our work, we use the optical characteristics of the chlorophyll A absorption and the near infrared plateau to define the NDVI a vegetation index commonly used as a proxy of MPB biomass. What we did is we created a time series of 30 years combining Landsat and SPOT data, which allowed us to analyze the dynamics of MPB biofilms around these two reefs you can see in the picture, reefs colonized by, by Crassostria gigant monsters. What we first saw very clearly was that MPB patches of higher concentration occurred around the oyster reefs, and these patches seem to occur almost systematically along the time series. So what we did is we drew a retro transect crossing the two reefs and extracted NDVI values on the whole time series. The resulting mean transect shows that recurrent, highly concentrated MPB patches are present around the oyster reefs. So from this stage, we already knew that oysters actually seem to have a positive effect on MPB. In order to confirm that this effect was really linked to the presence of the live oysters and not, for example, to the structure of the reefs, a before-after cultural impact experiment was conducted on the two reefs. One was selected as a control reef and the experiment took place on the other one. Experiments which consisted in the burning of the oysters so as to eliminate the organic matter without affecting the reef itself. What we saw on the first satellite images acquired after the experiments is the striking difference on uh, MPB development between the two reefs. Was the concentration around the control reef increased following the seasonal dynamics? The MPB around the impacted reef did not follow that development. It even came back to more normal level only almost a few years after the experiment. So, as a conclusion, this study provided the first indication of live oysters actually promoting impact on MPB dynamics. The hypothesis of uh, nutrient inference has been advanced as an explanatory factor. Where oyster organic matter released through excretion and biorecognition would stimulate MPP growth. The study also confirmed that remote sensing is a great and proficient tool for large scale temporal analysis of ecosystem processes. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>